Hi, my name is Shmal Pope, aka J Phoenix, and this is your astrology forecast for the weekend of August 12th through the 13th of 2023. This is the, your first time to my channel. If my intro is awkward, it's because this video is coming out a lot later than I anticipated. It was already going to come out late, and I knew it was. So to my subscribers, people that frequent my channel, I do apologize. It's been a bit of a day. <laughs> it's been a bit of a day, but I'm here. I'm well. I'm breathing. I took a shot of vodka as soon as I got home. <laughs> And um, we are here. But yes, this is going to be your astrology forecast for this weekend of August 12th and 13th of 2023. So I definitely appreciate you guys joining me. And um, we're just going to hop right into it. Of course, the first part of this is really going to be more of a recap of the energies of the day. And then we'll really get into Sunday, which is really like the big day of the astrology. So, you know, of course, we have the moon here in Cancer for most of the day. If you go back to just even like the beginning of the day, you know. Because I usually start my transit, I usually start my pro my um, broadcasts or my videos showing it at this time or so, six twenty seven. So, you know, five degrees here. You know, it was making, of course, the nice little trine over to Saturn or was coming off the trine to Saturn. You know, um, but it wouldn't really aspect really anything else throughout the day. That's why it's honestly like kind of interesting that I. I'm starting this video now because the moon is here at 13 degrees of cancer, right? Um, so it's getting ready to sextile Jupiter, right? It will sextile Jupiter over the night and then tomorrow it'll come into a sextile with Mercury and Mars, which would be nice as well. Um, now, of course, the main thing of this weekend, the whole, the main event of this weekend is Venus conjunct the sun. If there's anything that you guys need to know about, this is going to be a short video. I'm just going to be honest with you guys. It's going to be a short video. But if there's anything that you guys need to know about this weekend, it's Venus conjunct the sun. That is the main thing that's happening here, right? Let's go ahead and just fast forward to that exact moment, shall we? When they exactly conjunct. I mean, you're all, we're already feeling this energy. But we'll just go ahead and fast forward to when it actually is, like, officially conjunct. Like, down to, like, well, it's... Probably around this time. So, like, pretty much starting the day on Sunday. It's 7.35 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We're going to have the sun conjunct Venus here at 20 degrees of Leo. We have a moon in Cancer that is going to be squaring Chiron at the same time. And, of course, this conjunction is training over to Chiron. This is going to be a very sensitive moment for everyone. The moon being at home in Cancer, of course, it's feeling good. It has to oppose Pluto again, yeah, but it's a little bit different this time, right? Especially, I guess, because the last time it opposed Pluto, the sun was there. So, you know, there was a little bit more, there was a little bit of pressure from the sun. Not bad pressure, but just a little bit of pressure. Now the sun is with Venus and Leo, which that energy can be very, very positive, but it can be very, very uncomfortable. Why? Because the sun is in many ways kind of burning away a lot of the impurities of the Venus energy. Venus, which of course retrograded at 28 degrees of Leo, was stuck at that degree for the better part of two weeks. So when it comes to the Venusian energy, we've been feeling, we, were, we felt stuck for two weeks and then it finally felt like something was moving. Even though it was backwards and we're going through a review period, at least we were getting some kind of progress, some kind of clarity into feeling better, into feeling our creativity and our passion, into feeling our beauty, feeling our value and knowing that value and invoking that value, if you will. We finally started to feel a little bit better. Now we have the sun conjuncting Venus here at 20 degrees. It's going to be a sensitive, it's a sensitive degree. The number is two. It reduces down to two. This is the number of the moon, number of cancer. And, of course, the moon here is in its home sign. These energies are meeting up in the third decade of Leo, which is ruled by Mars. Mars, which is now in the third decade of 
Virgo, which is ruled by Venus. So a lot of things are kind of coming back to this energy. This is really, the, if, there's any, if there's anything I can just say to describe this time right now, is that you, we are all kind of getting the runaround. We are all trying to get answers from somebody. Somebody that normally should provide us the answers that we're looking for. Someone whose responsibility it probably will be to give us, give us those answers. But what's happening right now is the sort of deferment of the telling of news, be it good or bad. There's a deferment right now happening where the people that you normally would go to to try to understand certain situations just don't have the answers right now. This planet is trying to go to that planet. This planet is trying to go to that planet. This, trying, this planet is trying to go to that planet. This is definitely a moment where we had to go within and find a deeper resolve to get to these situations, right? I think this will be a very beautiful weekend as far as like the transformations you're going to feel. You will feel, especially come the new moon in Leo, which will be at 23 degrees of Leo, you will feel, especially, of course, starting on Sunday, you know, Come early in the morning, the moon's going to hit that 20 degree mark, right? It'll get ready. It'll be getting ready to sextile over to Mars, sextile over to Uranus, and it's going to enter that balsamic phase of the moon, which is that last 30 degrees. So it's going to be this dark phase of the moon. So being that is in these signs, and it's going to be in the area that a black moon Lilith just retrograded and an area where Venus is retrograding. It's going to be a rather sensitive balsamic phase because it's dealing with this Cancerian energy, of course, and the Leo energy, which is a very metaphysical kind of energy, right? You're definitely going to feel a shift this weekend when it comes to the way that you value your joy the way that you appreciate your joy or if you take your joy serious, do you care about your joy? Do you care about your happiness? Do you care about your creativity? Do you care about your unique expression in this world? Do you care about putting yourself out there regardless of what anyone thinks or says? Do you care about looking like a fool sometimes? Do you care about, you know, do you worry about, you know, getting canceled because of you expressing your true authentic self? Right, because this is such a sensitive degree, being that it's 20 degrees, you know, we're going to be kind of looking to the moon, and it's interesting that, of course, the moon will enter the balsamic phase while this is still happening, right? This is kind of one of those transits, honestly, where it's like I can tell you guys, I can break it down and what it means. But considering the fact that we haven't had a Venus retrograde only in Leo for over 200 years, and now we get the sun go conjuncting Venus in this spot, it's something that, like, it's almost otherworldly. Because if it's over 200, that's a whole other world away. People thought differently back then. People were doing different things back then. Influences were different. So if, you, if you're if you feeling a lot of people, you may feel like you're grasping for straws right now. You may feel like you're just trying to, there could be a nostalgia aspect to this where you just wanted to like, why can't I just go back to the way things used to be? Why can't I go back to things when like, like a simpler time? And that's the other part about this, guys. We don't have any major energy in Aquarius. Besides the south node in Libra and then a couple of asteroids, which are minor, we had no air energy. So trying to intellectually think through these situations and trying to figure out what's going on using that kind of logic is not really going to work. It's going to be more of like an intuitive logic, right? Which is Earth. An intuitive and more instinctual kind of logic of sort of like female aspect of logic, right? Because so air and fire are masculine, water and earth are feminine, but then you have like the more logical aspect and you have like the more emotional aspects, right? 
whereas the fire and the water are more emotional, the earth and the air are more practical generally. So this is like a more feminine practical aspect that we're having to deal with with the earth energy. But what's funny about that too is that the energies that are in those signs are typically masculine, except for Mercury, which is more of hermaphroditic. You have Mars, which is masculine generally in Virgo. Uranus, which is masculine in Taurus, and Jupiter, which is masculine, that's in Taurus. And yes, Jupiter is uh, traditionally rules Pisces as well. And yes, Mars traditionally rules Scorpio as well, right? But that's the thing about this. And then, of course, you have Pluto and Capricorn, right? It's an interesting energy right now that we're dealing with. Where we're trying to figure out the logic of our lives. And we're trying to figure out if things make sense or not. And trying to figure it out from that perspective is not really working. But that doesn't mean that things aren't working out. It doesn't mean that miracles can't happen. It doesn't mean that we can't find our way. It doesn't mean that there aren't things that are working out in your life. We have to take stock of what's working in our life. And maybe those things that are working out in our life have been working out in our life, and we're probably taking them for granted. The people that you care about that actually, you know, really care about you too, that continue to show up in your life, you know? Maybe the thing that's working is the fact that every day you come home from a job that sucks, but you have a wonderful dog or a cat that greets you and is just happy to see you. That's working. Those are the little things that we just take for granted. You look in your fridge and there's food in there. We got to take stock of what is working and stuff. And it's not about lowering standards either. I think it's there's a there's a weird sort of intersection between having like being grateful but also wanting to strive for more but also, you know, appreciating what we have but also not necessarily wanting to lower our standards for things. You know what I'm saying? So it's like I felt like there were sometimes people may lower their standards. Hey, Leo Bear. Some people people may lower their standards because they don't want to feel ungrateful for where they are. You know what I mean? So balancing that energy is it can be difficult and it's going to look different from every for every person. So you can strive for more and want more in your life and still appreciate what you have, right? You don't have to lower your standards for anyone or anything. But we have to still remind ourselves to have gratitude and appreciate the things that are working in our life. Appreciate the beautiful things. Appreciate that, like, things will work out in the end. No matter how crazy and dire they seem, they will work out in the end. It's just that sometimes when we're going through those moments and we're going through those storms, sometimes we just can't see it. Right? I will spare you the details of why my day was a little crazy, especially this last half of the day. I'll spare you the details of it, but it honestly, and I was talking to my wife about it. I was like, you know what? Even though some of this stuff I'm flabbergasted by, I'm not surprised at the same time. But that's the wonderful, that's the beautiful thing about astrology. I can look at these plants, look at the transits and interpret the energy and stuff. And it still throws curveballs at me. But then I look at the astrology, I'm like, yeah, honestly, it makes sense. But we don't necessarily know how it's going to play out. It just gives us like a sort of like it gives us like a blueprint, if you will. That's kind of the beautiful thing about this. I think it's a great tool for understanding, you know, ourself, the nature of ourselves, the nature of this world, our universe in many ways, or at least this neighborhood of the universe, if you will, that we are in and stuff. And it's um but it, it definitely can throw some curveball stuff too. It keeps showing your toes. It keeps you humble too. I, 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 at least it keeps me humble. So, yeah. I think that Venus conjunct the sun is going to be very powerful. It's going to be a moment where you, it's going to give us like a boost. It's like, yeah, no, actually, you are beautiful. You are amazing. You are creative. You can be received by others. Other people can. You, your joy, the joy that you have, the passion that you have will be, can and will be received by others. You know, sometimes it's stressful. Sometimes, yes, maybe it's opening up an old wound. Yeah, sometimes maybe it's 
doesn't look the way that we want to. Maybe we're being accepted by people that we never really thought we were going to be accepted by. Maybe our alliances and our tribes are are shifting right now, and maybe we don't know what to do with it. This Venus conjunctive sun is going to be sort of like that moment where it's like, okay, it is what it is, right? It's a very much so, it, it is what it is kind of energy. It doesn't have to be a bad thing. We can't just try and force the way that we want things to look on the universe. We have to learn how to go with the flow of the universe. And it's a tough lesson for all of us to learn. Even those of us that typically like, oh, I'm just a go, go with the flow kind of person. It's tough for us as well. I'm a Scorpio 12th house son. So I'm a fixed, I'm fixed water in the 12th house. So it's like an I'm, it's like an ice cube in a river that doesn't want to melt. <laughs> it's kind of and Mars is there too, so that's what it kind of feels like. We have the Queen of Pentacles in reverse. Yeah, that's that's pretty much what this is. The Queen of Pentacles in reverse. We have that followed by the Queen of Cups in reverse. Yeah, so you literally have Venus and the Moon pretty much showing up here with these energy, and then you have. Yeah, the Six of Swords. So, yeah, it, this is definitely a moment where we can feel that we are going on a new adventure. We are starting to embark. And I think what's happening here is that, like, there is a bit of there's a bit of a somber kind of energy here because we have been requesting this. We have been wanting this. Our actions have been proving that we want the changes that are happening in our life to happen. I think it's just that the way that they're being presented, the way that they're coming up, is not the way that we wanted it to come up. And maybe it can cause some confusion, some disappointment, some anger. It, it can invoke some emotions right now, right? It can evoke a sense of like, damn, like, I know I asked for this. And I'm I'm cool with this. But, like, the way that it's happening just does, it, it feels like it could have happened. It feels like it could have been handled better, Right? I don't know, maybe I'm projecting based off of my own experience that I've been going through over the last week. But maybe you're feeling the same way. I do my best not to project necessarily my experience, what I'm going through, onto you guys. But I feel like this is definitely that time where like, we're wanting to feel our value. We're wanting to feel good about things. And we know that there are changes that are, are happening. We can feel the changes that are happening. We, and we want to move forward. It's just that I think there's an aspect of us that really – just hopes that maybe the people that the situations that we're moving on from, maybe that they will understand, but it's not, maybe they're not really getting it or they're not giving us the response that we thought they were going to give us and stuff. It's one of those moments where you have to just sort of like nod your head, smile and keep moving forward because, you know, that's just how it goes. You know, we're going through some realignments of the energy we're going through a massive purification moment, a massive purification moment. And um, I mean, I think this is honestly kind of destined. The fact that this conjunction has happened for the first time in 200 years and the moon will actually be in a balsamic phase while this is still happening is nothing short of a fucking miracle, to be fair. It's going to actually be healing like generational traumas and stuff like that. It's, it's going to be healing a lot. That's why it's going to feel a little bit heavy. Because, I mean, between this energy, you have Juno, which is the planet of commitment, and then you have Black Malo, which is all, what's like fear and these different things that we worry about. These like deeper desires and shit like that, you know. So it's, yeah, it's going to feel pretty intense, you know. And these are minor asteroids, mind you, but they do have influence, especially considering the fact that they're in close proximity with the moon and the sun. So their influence is going to become magnified, especially Black Malo, you know what I mean? Especially Black Moon Lilith, because it's so close to this energy. So it's going to be a little bit more magnified, which is why it's going to be really important for you to kind of dig deep and find your resolve and realize that, you know, you have to play, you have to work with the cards that you've been dealt with. And you can go out there and make things happen, too. And you can go out there and, you know, accept and embrace your amazing superpowers, but also realize that, you know, we're all kind of playing this game, too. And sometimes... Sometimes you may get screwed over. Sometimes you get may get left behind. Sometimes you may feel tossed aside. But you just got to keep moving because that just means that the universe is setting you up to meet other people that are going to be better for you in your journey at this time. And that's just the way that we got to look at it.
you know. So the other card for today is, um, yeah, we have the card of the solar plexus. So yeah, the frequency of the solar plexus chakra, the yellow flower of life, supports our sense of self, our personal power, and our willpower, as well as our knowing of who we are and what our contribution is to the whole. When you are standing in your truth and your power, when you are standing in your love, when you are being like the sun and you are standing in that power, when you are embracing that Christ consciousness that we all have access to, but they told you and a lot of other people and just about everyone else that you can only access the Christ consciousness through another person. Despite the fact that he was telling you that you could access it yourself as well. That's all, of course, you know, code and shit like that. But you can access that shit as well. This is definitely a moment where we don't want to overdo it by invoking our will and going too overboard. Because if you go too overboard, right, then you get into that weird North Node Chiron aspect where you go a little bit too hard in the paint. You invoke your will a little bit too much and you ostracize the people around you. And you just become like a dick or a bitch or something like that, right? But when you are doing this from a place where you are contributing to the whole, by you being your authentic self, you being your authentic self is actually like positively affecting the other people around you and raising their vibration just simply by you being you. That is true willpower. That is going to do it for your week in astrology forecast. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. Please forgive me for the tardiness of this video. I know it came out a little bit later, but I trust and hope that it helps you and assists you on your journey. So that's all I want to do. Y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend. And I'll see you guys for the Monday astrology forecast. Peace out.